Hey guys, in this video we're going to cover the plugins and effects that are available in Persona Studio One 4, particularly the plugins that are in the Prime version since they're free and available to everyone, including the beginners that might be using this tutorial. Before continuing, make sure you're caught up by watching all the videos in this series so far because we're assuming you're familiar with everything in those videos. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see all our new videos, including the rest of this series. One of the main things to know about the plugins in Studio One is that the included plugins have presets. These are starting points that adjust our sound in a particular way for a certain use. So for example, we might have some settings for a channel strip for different sections of a drum kit. We can select that in the plugin from the drop down at the top and it will normally start with default. Of course we can adjust all the settings after selecting a preset. The Channel Strip plugin is our main mixing tool since it provides us with some compression and equalization. We don't get a lot of fine control with this though, and that's one of the major limitations of the Prime version of Studio One. First on the left, there's a little box we can click to enable the low cut, which removes some of the low frequencies. This is also called a high pass filter since it lets all the high frequencies pass through and removes the low frequencies. Below that, we can click and drag the knob to change the frequency for the cutoff point. You'll see this on the grid to the right. At a higher frequency, more low frequencies are removed. If the frequency is set lower, it only cuts out a little bit at the lowest frequencies. Next we have compression and expansion, with speed settings underneath. These allow us to change the dynamics, which is basically how loud a track is and how much variation there is in the volume. So if we compress it a lot, the level will be a little more consistent. We can change the speed underneath with buttons from fast, medium, and slow. The right side provides equalization controls, which is basically just a volume level that is applied around a certain frequency. The top row controls the levels and the bottom row controls the frequencies. We can also see those change on the grid. Finally on the right, there's a gain control that we can adjust manually or set to auto to bring the gain up to level. The goal with these controls is to make adjustments to the dynamics and frequencies, but then adjust the level back to normal, that way we can make a direct comparison after. If we want to compare the changes the plugin has made, we can use those power buttons like we did before to turn it on and off, and we can flip between these as the track is playing. The other main effect we use in our mix really commonly is reverb, and that's through the Mixverb plugin. For those not familiar, reverb is an effect that simulates sound waves bouncing around inside a room, so it takes a very dry signal that may be recorded close up with a microphone or recorded as a direct input from an instrument, and gives it that space. We're adding reverb on an effects track that we set up as the send in the last video. Our first control is the pre-delay, which is the time between the dry signal and the reverb starting. Next is the size of the reverb, and we'll sound like we're in a bigger room if we increase this. Damp affects the reflections and frequency response of the reverb. Gating for the reverb effect is a little more complicated and it's usually not turned on except for some special techniques. The width of the reverb is a stereo control and it determines whether there's a wide spread between left and right or if it's very narrow. Finally, mix adjusts the balance between the original signal and the reverb signal. You'll see in this case it's locked to 100% and that's because we're using this on an effects channel. That's how we want to keep it since the effects channel should not have any of the original signal and the amount of reverb we hear after can be adjusted with the track fader. One of the cool plugins that we have in Persona Studio One is Ampire, which is an amp simulation plugin that makes a direct guitar signal sound as if it's coming through a guitar amp, instead of that clean sound we get when a guitar is plugged straight into the computer. Since we can use input monitoring in Studio One, we can hear the guitar processed in real time as we play it. Since this video series is based on the Prime version of Studio One, we only have access to one amp and cabinet with a few controls on it, and none of the stomp boxes that the full version has. The amp has presence, bass, middle, treble, master, and preamp knobs. If you don't have an audio interface to work with the software and just want to connect your guitar, consider using a USB guitar cable. These are configured as a simple audio interface to allow you to play your guitar with the built-in amp simulation software in real time, and they're very cheap to use, so check out our other video on that and the links in the video description. Another plugin we can use with a guitar is the tuner. Whenever we're recording, we want to make sure our guitar is tuned up, maybe between every take if we find it necessary for the best results. 
The tuner allows us to quickly tune our guitar within the software. Now let's get into some of the less common plugins that are used in Persona Studio One. Beat Delay allows us to create a repeat in our signal with a slight delay. The amount of delay applied is determined by the Beats knob and will lock to the project time. Feedback controls the amount of repeats, width controls the stereo spacing, and mix controls how loud the delayed signal is. Chorus is used to make it sound like there's multiple instruments playing together by adding a slight delay to the sound. It's used to thicken it up a little. Flanger and phaser effects create a sweeping sound. Red Light Dist is a distortion plugin. You can experiment with the controls of each of these to adjust them or use a preset, but they are a little less common to use and overall the channel strip, reverb, amp simulator, and delay are the main plugins you'll end up using on your project. Thanks for checking out this video on the plugins in Persona Studio One. If this video helped you out, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon to get notifications whenever a new video is released. You can also check the video description for products featured in this video and social media links.